there are several factors that influence the value of the nation's currency. A recent month, Nigeria's official tender, the Naira, has been losing value against the dollar and other global currencies. As since June 2014, Godwin Imifile has been in charge of the central bank of Nigeria. But is the CBN responsible for the fall of the Naira? To share his thoughts and discuss the implications of exchange rate volatility is Babajido Gusonwo, data and information consultant. Great to have you here as always. Good evening, Amachi. Good evening. Love the flower on your jacket. I love it the chain on your nice. jacket. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's be done with the compliments already. So what do you think or what do the facts say? Is the change in exchange rate based on some fundamental or technical reason? Or as some say, it's caused by, you know, market manipulators. What do you have? So we'll go into the reasons, but we can't start tonight without talking about the good news and the bad news regarding the exchange rate. And the good news is for those that held on and bought some dollars about two years ago, for instance, if you bought $2,000 just two years ago, you were not a millionaire in, in, in Naira then. But now, your $2,000 has made you a millionaire. Mm -hmm. So the good news is for those that bought a lot of dollars in the time past, they are smiling today. Good news. The bad news is the government wants to get 100 million Nigerians out of poverty within the next 10 years. But the world measures the poverty line in dollars. In other words, if the Naira keeps depreciating, then more Nigerians are falling into poverty rather than being taken out of poverty. That will never meet up. And so the Naira depreciation means more Nigerians are going into poverty, which means more families will get more desperate. And you know the implications on security when more families will be start getting desperate. So the depreciation of the Naira has effects on even national security. That is the good and the bad news. But to put this in context, I'll summarize this as in three ways. The first is there's no reason to be surprised, and I'll explain that a bit later on. The second is we're here because of wrong decisions and poor choices. And the third is we need to start believing. We need to start thinking rather than believing. You know, believing is easy. Thinking is the hard work. And the evidence shows that in history, we have been doing more of just believing than thinking. Why do I say we shouldn't be surprised? Let's take a look at the facts since Nigeria gained independence. These are the facts. In the 60s and the 70s, with 71 Koba, you could get a Naira. And if you look at what is in front of you, the trends have always been clear. The Naira has always been depreciating every decade. 54 Kobo in 1980, which was a bit of an appreciation. But look at what has happened since 1990. 1990, 8 Naira, 70 Kobo. 10 years after, 106 Naira. 10 years after, 156 Naira. 2020, 465 Naira. And you don't have to be a mathematician to understand this trend. By just looking at it, you can see the direction of the Naira and you can easily be able to play some forecast as to what you think the Naira will be by 2030 if this trend continues. What are you thinking, Babajide? Do you think that the central bank has much influence on the exchange rate? So here's what I'll tell you. Um, about seven decades ago, um, the, world, the world first heard the phrase, it takes two to tango. It was a song by Al Hoffman and Dick Manning. It takes two to tango. Regarding Nigeria's exchange rate, it takes the monetary and the physical department, the monetary and physical policy, that is the central bank and the executive government. In simple terms, the central bank alone cannot fix the Naira. The government alone cannot fix the Naira. It takes two to tango. So let's take a look at the facts. How have the central bank governors on their own part been playing their role when it comes to managing the Naira? So let's take a look at how the Naira has declined over, all, over previous central bank governors. And that is the fact. The evidence shows that between 1982 and 1993, under Governor Abdul Kadir Ahmed, between 1982 and 1993, the Naira depreciated by over 3,000% against the dollar. That was, that's been the worst rate under a governor. The second is under Governor Paul Agbai, between 1993 and 1999, the Naira depreciated against the dollar by more than 360%. The 
The central bank governor has been in since June 2014 to date. We've seen a depreciation of the Naira by over 200%. But like I started earlier, it, it takes two to tango. It's about the central bank's monetary policy and the executive government's fiscal policy. So what are the goods that we've seen and the good sides we've seen the central bank do? And if you take a look at MFLA's style of governance or what has happened in Nigeria since he has come in, we've seen three waves, just like you will talk about COVID-19. And here are the three waves and how the central bank and the Nigerian economy has been perceived. Wave one, between 2014 to 2016, we've seen less capital coming to Nigeria, 21 billion, and we see that decline. Wave two started in 2016. We see capital importation increasing in Nigeria, and currently we're on wave three. Capital importation in the country yes. has started declining from 2019, started declining from 2019, 2020, and here's where we are today. So in all, three waves. In all, it takes two to tango. Looking at history, there's nothing to be surprised. We are here because of wrong decisions and poor choices. And finally, we need to start thinking more than believing because believing is easier than thinking. So it takes two to tango, but the box still falls on the feet of the elected leaders. Yes, the box still falls at the, at the feet of the elected leaders. Um, well, what Nigerians are really concerned about is what is the future? What is the solution? And we need to, first of all, identify the cause. Amarachi, I'd like to use this analogy. If you have a headache, it could be because of a lot of reasons. It could be because of malaria. It could be because you've had a stressful day. It could be because you are broke. The summary is we need to identify the cause. And even though there are several reasons why the exchange rate is where it is today, the fact shows that there's one major cause, and that is Nigeria's balance of trade has been getting worse since 2018. So let's take a look at the facts, because that is a critical component of how stable the, 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 the country sources dollars. In 2018, we have the positive balance of trade, which is on the third row of 5.3 trillion naira. We're exporting more than importing, so we had a positive balance. In 2019, we still had a positive balance, but it was not as much as what it was in 2018. Last year, we had not only a negative trade balance, the trade balance last year was a negative of 7.3 trillion naira, the worst in recent history. And this year, we've seen the first quarter results, and it shows a negative of approximately 4 trillion naira. We are importing more than we are exporting. In the final analysis, Amarachi, let's remember these three things. One, there's nothing happening in Nigeria that should surprise you. Two is that we need to start thinking more than we are believing. And finally, we are here because of wrong decisions and poor choices. Babajide, always a pleasure having you here on the News at 10. You know, the pleasure is always mine, Amarachi. <laughs> uh, great.